thank you, uh, Abilio, for the presentation. And I would like to thank all the organizers of ASEAN 23 for having invited me to give this lecture. Uh, the lecture is part of uh, the research performed within, uh, uh, I don't know how to use the mouse. Okay. Okay, the pointer. Okay, within this research project, Fatigue for Light. <clears throat> so I would like also to acknowledge the European Union for having funded the research. And the, res uh, the uh, talk is devoted to the uh, fatigue response of AEM materials, in particular to a methodology for the statistical analysis of the experimental data sets that um, especially in case of AM materials are strongly, largely affected by the uh, scatter. And indeed, um, there are several scatter sources in fatigue and uh, the most relevant ones are taken into account also in the well-known Murakami formulations for the <laughs> uh, um, fatigue strength. Indeed, you can see here the defect size, uh, then the weaker hardness of the material, which is relate directly related to the microstructure, and uh, the residual stresses that can be taken into account through the stress ratio. So these are the three most relevant scatter sources under fatigue. And um, in experimental evidence of uh, the relevance of these scatter sources um, for uh, an LC10 aluminum, uh, aluminum alloys uh, is provided by uh, our research uh, group in this paper, where uh, we have studied the effect of the stress relief treatment on the uh, S-built specimens in SLM LC10 alloy. And we have studied the fatigue strength at 10 to the 9 cycles. This means very high cycle fatigue. As you can see uh, in this table, we got uh, different values for the weaker hardness, different values for the residual stresses, depending on the stress relief treatment. Obviously, the case in which we have residual stresses were the case in which the heat treatment was not applied and different defect population, defect size population that finally resulted in different fatigue strength uh, values. But the most important aspect is that not only the median fatigue strength are different, but we have a large uh, fatigue scatter and dispersion uh, in uh, variability in the fatigue strength that in many cases, and all in this case too, uh, prevents to take into account uh, correctly, uh, to assess correctly the investigative factors. Then uh, this is the main motivation uh, behind this uh, research. Um, the large fatigue scatter, and together with the uh, limited sample size, that uh, generally uh, uh, we have to uh, take into account when dealing with AM materials, uh, prevents uh, to find, uh, to clearly assess the uh, investigative factors in uh, uh, performing the research studies on AM materials. Indeed, uh, this slide reports two examples. Uh, the first picture on the uh, left is um, uh, taken from the liter from the AM literature and is related to uh, the fatigue response of uh, AM materials uh, built in with different uh, building angles, 0, 45 degrees and 90 degrees, 0 horizontal, 90 uh, vertical and 30, 45 in between. And <clears throat> the last picture, uh, in this uh, set of uh, SN plot, reports all the data together. And as you can see, the scatter bands uh, are quite large and cannot permit a clear assessment. Uh, 
of the uh, effect of the building angles. Uh, a similar results can be obtained if we consider what happens in the, in the picture on the uh, right, where the investigated factor in this case is the manufacturing process. And there are a lot of data points and data sets. And uh, even in this case, there's an overlap that cannot clearly permit to understand which is the effect of the manufacturing process. Then the main objectives of this work are to propose a statistical methodology for the analysis of the experimental data to assess the significance of the investigative factors by taking into account the fatigue scatter as well as the limited sample size and uh, to apply the methodology to uh, uh, several literal da literature data sets. This is the outline of the presentation. We will start, I will start uh, present, representing, recalling uh, typical S probabilistic SN models in fatigue, um, high cycle and low cycle. Uh, then I will give some preliminary definitions that we, we can say are the main ingredients for the application of the methodology, the statistical methodology. Then I will apply uh, the methodology to some experimental data set and show the results. And finally, I will draw some, some conclusions. Let's start with the typical SN trends that uh, uh, we can have in uh, fatigue. Uh, it is applied to AM materials, but not only to AM materials, obviously. And these are the two simplest uh, trends that, that we can have in fatigue. There are also some other more complicated trends, but I don't uh, want to take into account them uh, at, at this level. Um, the very simplest uh, uh, probabilistic SN model is related to the Baskin law, linear trends uh, um, applied all over the fatigue regi uh, regime from uh, high cycle to very high cycle. Uh, another well-known trend is the linear fatigue trend with an horizontal plateau that is related to the fatigue limit region. So we have finite fatigue life and infinite fatigue life in such kind of uh, SN trends. Then let's start with the simplest um, SN trend that is linear uh, without the horizontal plateau, linear without the fatigue limit. Uh, in a log-log plot, we have on the abscissa axis the logarithm of the number of cycles to failure. This Y stands for the logarithm of the number of cycles. And on the ordinate axis, we have X, that is the logarithm of the applied stress. And then we have a linear variation in this B logarithmic plot. And this um, linear variation is taken into account in a probabilistic model. Uh, that has the mean value, as you can see here, that, uh, that linearly depends on the applied uh, logarithm of the stress, on the logarithm of the applied stress, and a constant standard deviation. Here you can see that the probabilistic distribution hmm, that defines the probabilistic SN trend is a function, this phi is the normal distribution um, that depends on the applied stress through the uh, Baskin law and on the scatter of the experimental data. In total, for this very simple probabilistic SN model, we have three parameters. So the set of set theta of the parameters that must be estimated uh, when applied the statistical methodology that I will describe later are free in this case. Obviously, if we uh, add the fatigue limit region, so we have linear with fatigue limit, the horizontal plateau, then the number of the uh, parameters that we have to estimate increases. 
A, B, and sigma Y are related to the finite fatigue life region and are the same as before, hmm? these three, where, but we have to add two more parameters, sigma XL and mi XL, that are the mean and the standard deviation related to the random fatigue limit region. And then how can we put together these two sources of variability? Then we can be demonstrated that the probabilistic function hmm, distribution is just the product of the distribution of the finite fatigue life region times the distribution of the random fatigue limit. So that you will, you will have a unified model that can describe, describe uh, the two, the two uh, regions. Okay, let's start now uh, with the uh, main ingredients for the application of the uh, methodology. Uh, the first main ingredient is the uh, probabilistic SN curve. So far we have defined this function that is the uh, statistical distribution of the uh, SN, probabilistic SN trend. If we uh, put this distribution equal to a probability, alpha is a probability between zero and one, then we are creating an equation that relates Y, the logarithm of the number of cycles to failure, and X, the logarithm of the stress, so the number of cycles and the stress, the fatigue life and the, the applied stress, through a value of probability. This equation results in curves where that are specific for a specific, uh, that are specific for a, 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 a fixed value of the probability. Here you can see the 95% probability and the 5% probability SN curve. Obviously, if you want to draw this curve and to get, you have to estimate the parameters involved inside uh, the model for the probabilistic model for the SN trend. And how you can estimate those uh, parameters? We uh, have five parameters for the fatigue, li for the linear with fatigue limit and three parameters for the linear trends without fatigue limit, how can you estimate them? Then there are different uh, uh, um, estimation methods. The suggested one is the one based on the likelihood function. It is the maximum likelihood principle. Uh, it is suggested since uh, uh, with the maximum likelihood principle, you can take into account not only the failures that are inside this part of the equation of the likelihood function, but also the run out specimens. In many cases, the run out specimens are neglected when analyzing that data. Uh, with the likelihood function, with the maximum likelihood principle, you can take into account also the information inside uh, the run out specimens. And by definition, the likelihood function is the product of the probability density function, which are the derivatives of the probability functions for the uh, set of uh, failures, y and x are the coordinates of the failure uh, with subscript f, times the reliabilities, which are one minus the probability functions uh, for the uh, run out specimens. This couple is related to the, are the coordinates of the run out specimen. Then by maximizing this function, which is just function, uh, a function of the set of parameters that you want to estimate in the case of a fatigue linear with fatigue limit five parameters, by maximizing the likelihood function, you can get the maximum likelihood estimate that must be put inside this equation hmm, to get the curve. It, this approach is quite common and easy, but uh, uh, does not take into account one important aspect, uh, which is the fact that the estimates depend 
on uh, the accuracy in the estimate depends on the data set that we have. Uh, large sample size means good accuracy. Small sample size means uh, 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 pure accuracy in the estimation of the parameters. So how we can get, how we can take into account also the accuracy in the estimation, then the way in which we can take it to account in according to the uh, to well-known statistical procedures is the, through the profile likelihood. I don't want to use too much time in defining it, but uh, it's just a ratio between two maximum likelihood. On the bottom, the maximum likelihood that you have get with the estimates from the maximum likelihood principle. On the top uh, of the ratio, it's a particular likelihood, uh, maximum likelihood that depends on uh, a fatigue strength value. And uh, you, um, to get this top value, you have to transform the set of parameters uh, defined in the model so that uh, the uh, fatigue strength appears in the set of parameters. Here, uh, there's a, a, uh, an example of the procedure that you can get to transform the, a, 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 as an example, the mean uh, fatigue limit uh, into a, a function of the fatigue strength. So one of the parameters is transformed to get the fatigue strength inside. At the end, uh, what, uh, what is uh, the most important aspect is that you will have a, a function that depends on the fatigue strength. And this is quite important since uh, uh, it can be shown uh, that uh, the probabilistic distribution related to the uh, profile likelihood function is a key square distribution. And um, uh, so the profile likelihood, uh, which depends on the fatigue strength, can be correlated to a probability. Through this equation, you can define a relation between the fatigue strength and the probability beta. And this permits to take into account the uncertainty in the fatigue strength estimation. For a particular value of beta, you will have a particular value of uh, the fatigue strength, and then you can take into account uh, the confidence interval related to the uh, fatigue strength that you have estimated. Then uh, let's uh, start with the application of the procedure. Uh, here you can see an example of a fatigue data set where one failure is highlighted. Uh, the first step is uh, estimate the estimation of the parameters involved in the uh, probabilistic SN model. Then the, the very first, uh, the second step, let's say, is to uh, estimate the curve that passes through uh, that failure point in the data set. Then let's define a reference fatigue uh, life uh, where you would like to study the fatigue strength mm, that is uh, of interest for you, for your analysis. And then for that fatigue life, reference fatigue life, uh, you can compute according to the procedure and the definition that I gave before, you can compute the profile likelihood function. That is this one. And it, it is a sort of statistical distribution of the fatigue strength uh, shift shifted at this value of the fatigue life. The last three steps of the procedures of the procedure are uh, just used for um, estimating uh, for, for let's say for simulating the complete distribution of the fatigue strength uh, for all the failure data that we have in the data set. So a random uh, extraction of uh, a number of probabilities, then a random uh, uh, evaluation assessment of the uh, fatigue strength according to the profile likelihood function, and then collect all the uh, randomly extract, extracted 
uh, fatigue strength to get the uh, fat, uh, fatigue light uh, fatigue strength distribution. So uh, <clears throat> all these passages are uh, applied to get this relevant information. The fatigue strength distribution for a defined fatigue life, uh, which take, takes into account the uncertainty in the estimation and uh, uh, the data set from which uh, the, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that is collected in the experimental um, test. Then uh, let's now uh, pass to the uh, validation of uh, the methodology. The first set, uh, all, all, the, all the validation that I will show are three uh, data sets taken from the literature, from the AMM literature. And <clears throat> the first data set is by Lee et al. Uh, published, in, published in 2019. Uh, it is uh, um, a data set, uh, um, an investigation, a study uh, that would like to assess the effect of the building orientation, zero degree, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. Uh, I have mentioned this data set at the beginning. Uh, then, uh, as you can see, the authors, uh, uh, starting from a, a qualitative uh, evaluation decided to use uh, a linear with fatigue limit model. Uh, we have applied the same um, model, but according to the parameters estimated by the maximum likelihood principles, we got that a simple uh, linear model without fatigue limit was uh, sufficient in estimating the uh, data sets. Then by applying the methodology, finally, we got uh, the uh, fatigue strength distribution for the free orientation. X and Y means zero degree, Z means 90 degrees and 45 degrees. Uh, <clears throat> these plots report the uh, confidence intervals uh, for the fatigue strength at 10 to the seven cycles versus the uh, building orientation. As you can see, the mean fatigue strength decreases. Uh, but if you take into account the uh, uh, fatigue scatter, the confidence intervals, then this variation cannot be considered significant. And um, if we compare the, in the blue interval plots with the gray interval plots, uh, then um, we must um, um, consider, uh, highlight the effect of the uncertainty in, in the estimation. Since the blue interval, intervals are related to an analysis that takes into account the uncertainty in the estimation for the fatigue strength, while the gray intervals are smaller and are related to the same analysis without taking into account the uncertainty. So uh, here you can see with or without, with means with profile likelihood, with uncertainty and estimation, and without uh, with means without profile likelihood by not taking into account the, estimate, uh, the estimation uncertainty. A second data set is taken by Mazu, Mazuo uh, et, et al, uh, published in 2018. Uh, in this case, it's quite evident the uh, SN trends linear with fatigue limit. Uh, the investigated factor in this case is the manufacturing technology, EBM versus DMLS. Uh, by applying the methodology, uh, we studied the fatigue strength distribution at 10 to the 7 cycles. And as you can see, uh, the DMLS presents, uh, exhibits a larger fatigue strength, median fatigue strength with respect to the EBM. But if we consider the difference between these two uh, distribution, then we have that the uh, difference between the two fatigue strength is not relevant is not significant at 5% of error. Uh, 
what happens instead if we change the number of cycles to failure? Instead of using a reference fatigue strength at 10 to the 7, we have performed the same analysis at 2 times uh, 10 to the 5 uh, uh, cycles. And in, in this case, the difference was significant between the two fatigue strengths. Then this analysis showed that uh, not only um, the fatigue scatter must be taken into account, but also the uh, fatigue life at which the analysis is performed but must be considered. So depending on the fatigue life, you may have dif significant difference differences or not. The, uh, the last data set is taken from uh, Gunther et al, published in 2017. Again, is uh, I, I forgot to tell you that in all the cases uh, we are considering titanium alloys. Uh, so uh, the first, the second, and the third uh, samples are titanium alloys made by in this case, two different manufacturing processes again, EBM versus SLM. And SLM with or without the hip, hip process after uh, manufacturing. In this case, the model is linear. And uh, as you can see, by an, uh, analyzing the uh, fatigue strength distribution at two times 10, uh, to the nine very high cycle fatigue region. Uh, then we have that the heap process uh, significantly increase, increases the fatigue strength with respect also to the EBM process. Then uh, by comparing the fatigue strength for all the data sets, we got the significant effect, uh, statistically uh, significant effect of the uh, heaping process uh, with respect to the EBM or the uh, um, SLM without heap process. So coming to the conclusions, um, um, a statistical methodology was presented and uh, uh, it, uh, it, it was able, it is able to take into account the experimental scatter and uh, uh, the, also the uncertainty in the parameter estimation uh, for limited data sets. Uh, it, can take, it can take into account the linear model without fatigue limit or the linear with fatigue limit model. And it has been validated uh, successfully so, uh, with mm, different uh, data sets taken, to the, taken from the literature. So I would like to thank you again. Okay, uh, thank you, David, for your very interesting presentation. Uh, we are a little late, but uh, you deserve some <laughs> discussion. So I hope the session for uh, a couple of questions, uh, please. Yes, thank you for an uh, interesting approach. My question is when you define the statistical parameters, something in slide seven, if I could remember, uh, you use standard deviation. Oh. Standard deviation, this is average deviation, it's possible to say. Let me and, go back. Uh, here? Yes, there here. Standard okay. deviation, this is the average deviation from all data. Uh, deviation of uh, experimental data in, in fatigue are distributed not regularly in the deviation through the whole uh, lifetime. In the low cycle fatigue, is uh, deviation relatively small and in high cycle fatigue relatively large. If it's possible to take into account this, this fact, for example, by the approach, uh, estimate a level, uh, level by level of stress amplitude, this approach, not in the whole uh, line, in the whole region okay. of the of lifetime, but on the level, the level of stress amplitude, if it's possible. I don't know, this is only idea. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a very good question and a comment in general. Uh, you are perfectly right. Uh, the standard deviation is not constant with general with fatigue data. Uh, it depends obviously on the span that you are considering for the ACF, HCF region. Uh, if you are not going 
too close to the low uh, cycle fatigue, then it can be considered constant. In any case, this model is the simplest one where uh, the parameter related to the standard deviation is considered as constant. But if you consider a linear variation of the uh, standard deviation with respect to the applied stress, so if you put other two parameters at the bottom of this ratio, uh, C plus X times D, then you are considering a linear variation of the standard deviation with respect to the uh, applied stress. You can add a lot of parameters in the model to describe linear, quadratic, cubic, whatever, but the number of parameters obviously increases. And this is a drawback uh, when you have a limited sample size. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I will just make a, two brief comments and we must close, sorry. <laughs> but uh, sorry, yes, sorry. I, I'm very excited with your presentation because uh, I have been working with two colleagues from Spain, Cantelli yeah. and Castillo, about a wearable uh, yeah. model, you know, the model, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I was just... Uh, comparing both and I think your model has also yeah, a lot yeah. of good things. We have discussed. With... Perhaps one good thing that I saw, can you go to slide eight, please? Eight. Yeah. Oh, sorry, eight. Uh, yes, okay. sorry, the previous one, sorry. Yeah, so my question is or comment is about this uh, SCN field. It is possible to capture in the same SCN field high cycle in very high cycle regimes it's what you can see here right yeah yeah um, because it seems this, that you are uh, having the two slopes uh, yeah, yeah. behavior and this indeed this um, data set is somehow misleading with respect uh, to what i have discussed here uh, i have not considered in the in the models the duplex SN model. The, um, these are the two simplest model. Uh, but when uh, considering coming to the very high cycle fatigue, then generally we have uh, that the fatigue limit is instead of a transition stress with respect uh, that differentiates between and two different failure modes, surface and internal failure. And this is what is reported here. You have surface failure, fatigue limit that is a transition stress and internal failures. Such kind of model can be probabilistically uh, described. And in, in this paper I brought also this model and is the model related to the duplex trend. So you have to put also some other parameters in the model and it, it is more complicated obviously, but you can take into account both the high cycle and the low, uh, and the, the high cycle and the very high cycle fatigue uh, regions okay. together. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you.